Imagine an AI so brilliant it could solve humanity's hardest puzzles before you finish your morning coffee and possibly outthink you, your boss, and probably your entire family tree combined. Yeah, just imagine because O3 is nowhere near AGI, despite all the YouTubers and people on X crying about it being the holy grail of artificial general intelligence. According to OpenAI, O3 scored an unprecedented 75.7% on the super difficult ARC AGI benchmark under standard compute conditions, and with a high compute version reaching 87.5%. But don't worry, peasant, O3 isn't for you. This computational brilliance is strictly reserved for tech elites and megacorporations possibly plotting world domination. At a price of $1,000 per task with some casual tasks costing upwards of $6,000, O3 is the Rolls Royce of AI, and if you were hoping for a budget-friendly option, low compute tasks are only $20 per task, making it inaccessible to most users. For all that cash, O3 isn't that smart. Its steep pricing is not proportionate to its intelligence or utility, making users pay more for computational overhead than for actual problem-solving capability. And that's just the first red flag. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly why O3 isn't as smart as it's hyped up to be, its biggest flaws, and how OpenAI can fix them. Now, O3, the latest model of OpenAI's O-series models, leverages reinforcement learning on chains of reasoning to tackle tasks that require logical thought and mathematical precision. Like a mad scientist in a lab, it creates dozens of solutions for the toughest problems, each following detailed chains of thought with multi-step reasoning. But just like you, O3 doesn't trust itself. It has a verifier, which is a no-nonsense algorithm trained on datasets of correct reasoning which evaluates these solutions for logical consistency and correctness. Well, O3 is better due to its improved ability to think before speaking, thanks to improved internal deliberation mechanism which is a fancy word for talking to yourself. O3 doesn't just spit out the first answer that pops into its silicon brain. It double-checks, backtracks, and basically argues with itself in an improved way until it's 90% sure it's not about to embarrass everyone. And this improvement is due to its specialized training on larger, domain-specific datasets and multi-stage fine-tuning with expanded parameters. It leverages greater compute for longer training cycles and integrates reinforcement learning from RLHF while getting yelled at repeatedly until it finally stopped messing up. Now, some people have equated ARC AGI to solving artificial general intelligence, but call it, the mastermind behind the benchmark stresses on that fact that it is not an acid test for AGI, and passing it does not equate to achieving it. Though ARC AGI focuses on solving specific visual puzzles that require abstraction and reasoning, it does not encompass the breadth of tasks and general problem-solving abilities expected. O3 might look like a genius on paper, but it only shines in tests it was specifically trained for like ARC. This means its intelligence is highly situational and does not translate to broader, real-world problem-solving. Despite its advanced architecture, when you ask it something simple or toss it a logic problem outside its training, it flops like a fish out of water. The extra cost and compute it demands are absolutely ridiculous. It's like driving a Ferrari to deliver a pizza, flashy, expensive, and completely overkill for small jobs. At $1,000 to $6,000 per task, O3 should at least bring you coffee or solve world hunger. But instead, it's just sitting there, sweating profusely as it crunches. 55,000 tokens to answer what's 2 plus 2, and it might still mess that up. Meanwhile, smaller, simpler models are willing to do that same task for 1% of the cost and won't even melt servers doing it. Proportion is the key here, which is true intelligence per dollar, and why shell out thousands for something that doesn't deliver proportional benefits. Hence O3 isn't about efficiency, it's about flexing how many tokens it can burn while looking smart. But intelligence isn't about effort, it's about results. And if those results come with a six-figure bill, maybe it's time to break up with O3 and find a model that works with you, not against your wallet. Which brings us to the next part, O3 isn't just a tool, it's an exclusive VIP lounge where only the richest corporations can sip their overpriced compute cocktails. Meanwhile, the rest of us are left peering through the glass, clutching our outdated models like tech peasants because equitable access isn't part of O3's business model. And that's why OpenAI launched their $200 monthly subscription plan. Soon, they will graciously introduce their generous $2,000 monthly subscription. If you're someone who values equitable access to cutting-edge tools, O3 is a step towards widening the gap between tech elites and everyday users. Now, what we can say is O3 is exceptional in specific areas, its dominance is mainly limited to well-structured, objective problem spaces making it exceptionally well-suited to the creation of AI agents for specific tasks. And that's why Sam Altman posted Happy 2025, hinting that 2025 will be the year of AI agents. But before that, OpenAI needs to fix the compute problem. Collaborating with GPU manufacturers to develop custom configurations can enhance throughput for large-scale model training, enabling more cost-effective scaling. Startups like Grok and Cerebras are innovating like mad, trying to bridge the gap with better, faster, and cheaper chips. For now, the answer seems skewed toward exclusivity, so what do you think? Are we building a future for everyone or just the tech elite?